Great to see you. Yeah, you, you as well. <clears throat> so, and, um, and maybe there's a couple new people here I haven't seen before, so we want to welcome, welcome. especially welcome you Yay. to the to this tribe of love here. 
Yes. And um, and the 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 practices that we are going to be doing uh, are all about the da- the dance, because in the Song of Songs, in the Love at the Center practice, the verse that we are kind of entering in and exploring the mystery of is one that kind of t- that says, you know, it's, it's, it comes into chapter seven of the Song of Songs. There is this mm-hmm. beautiful dance happening, and uh, and we're and we're kind of cheering on this lover, which is who is the one in us who wants to join the dance, um, but needs a little bit of encouragement. Anybody here need a little encouragement? Sometimes we pull back. We wanted to watch the dance, and we are asked now to join, to join in the dance. Um, Alan Watts says that the only way to make sense out of change is, is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. So, this idea of the dance is kind of central to. Um, you know, to how to manage change, really, to understand it as a dance. And, um, and I'll come back to this, you know, but, but this idea of Israel being named the God wrestlers, you know, that's kind of what, one way of kind of drashing the name Yisrael. And what I'd like to do you know, I understand that wrestle, that wrestle with meaning, that wrestle with possibility, um, that wrestle with mm. life. But there is this transformation that can happen that be, that turns our wrestle into a dance. And it almost kind of looks the same on the outside, but kind of feels really different because we are understanding that we are following in this kind of the guidance of the great choreographer, Mm -hmm. which is another name for God, Mm -hmm. the great choreographer who has us kind of lift ourselves up into the dance. So so there is this uh, legacy that we have received from our ancestors who danced in order to pray. And, uh, and, you know, it kind of, our tradition kind of turned into a literary tradition. But before that, the remnants of, of the, the dance are still there. And if you, can, you find in Second Samuel the scene of the, these, these ecstatic singers and dancers going through the hills of the Galilee, mm-hmm. and every place they went, um, others would be touched by that dance and be pulled to join mm. into it. And we called those those people who danced and sang, we called them prophets. That was what prophecy looked like. Um, because when you enter into the dance, you lose yourself. You lose that small self and then the larger self can enter in and the larger self is the one that channels the divine presence Mm -hmm. so and and we live in a place in 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 new mexico where it's kind of normal that to pray with a dance and um you know the, the 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 ceremony that the native peoples do is called a dance Mm-hmm. And uh, and we're in the mountains of northern New Mexico, so we're in the, where the pueblos are. There's a pueblo that's very close here called the Hamas Pueblo. So, so the da- so the dance is how to how to move that energy, yeah, they dance. how to make sense of change, how to embody the divine flow, because if we don't embody it, it just stays up in our heads as something to think about but doesn't necessarily come into our lives. So there's this kind of a, the dance forms the bridge between that, you know, that sort of high energy that is, that is pouring into us and our actual lived life, how we live it. And um, 
Mm-hmm. But the Song of Songs, again, that's my most important question is like, oh, how do we live it? Mm-hmm. How do we live it with every sacred text that we receive? We don't want to receive it up here. We want to live it. It's an instruction so, manual to, so, to do. Yeah, to, but to dance, to dance yes. it, to dance it. So I want to say just one more thing about the dance is that um, sometimes when music is, if I go someplace and music is really loud, it's like, you know, I'm a little bit of a HSP, like highly sensitive person, and I'm like, no, it's too loud, too loud, too loud. But when I start dancing, it's not too loud anymore. <laughs> it's not too loud. And uh, it's curious to me, like, what happened? And I realized that whatever the input that is happening, and I think it's true of like the world is kind of giving us all of this energy, all of this stimulation, and the dance metabolizes that yeah, energy. It grounds it. It yeah. grounds it and metabolizes it. It embodies it. It channels it, mm-hmm. and it guards against overwhelm. <laughs> so I want to say that that our whole life is a dance, and all the stimulation that's coming in from the world, um, we need to do something with that energy. And when we pour it into the dance, we won't be overwhelmed. Um, Ooh, got some thunder we, rumbling. <laughs> we might have to close, we might have to close. Did Just, you hear that thunder? It's God's percussion. <coughs> So all through this hour that we're together, I'm going to invite you into the dance. And it's metaphorical, but it's also literal that you can, you could be dancing. You could be dancing just with your hand, if you like. You could be dancing with your, a little bit of a sway, or you can get up and go crazy. So let's let's do this dance, the turn, and it is the dance of turning and returning again. Shuvi 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 hashuva.
Close your eyes and see if you can find a, a still, small center and feel the whole world turning around you. So we dance in order to find our stillness. Because at the end of the dance, we, we, return, we return to that stillness, but it has been amplified by the dance. And if you're a little dizzy, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, You know, in the story of our journey to freedom, we, you know, we have a kind of a harrowing journey through the Red Sea and, uh, you know, chased by the Egyptians, chased, chased by our past. Um, and we find our way to freedom and, uh, and we're gonna, about to go into the wilderness and, and Miriam the prophet says, stop, wait, we're never going to make it in through this wilderness um, by, by walking, by trudging along. The only way that we can uh, sustain ourselves in the, in the wilderness is through the song and through the dance. And so she teaches the people how to dance, how to dance uh, in a way that's different from when they were enslaved. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> It's like taking away all of that conditioning of how to dance and of, you know what's right and what's wrong and just like entering Busted in free. to the flow. And that's what will sustain us on our wilderness journey. <clears throat> so, um, so this is a dance of return and, and a dance of... of of going towards and returning, and going towards and returning. And uh, there is an, an ancient um, book of our tradition that is called um, Sefer Yitzira, um, the book of creation. And it, it's, it's actually attributed to Abraham. It's that mm -hmm. old. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is this cryptic phrase in Sefer Yitzira, which um, um, the Hasidic movement just kind of grabbed onto and said, how will we live this? And the phrase is, is, is Ratzov Shov. Ratzov Shov. Ratzov is the running, the, the running towards God, the lifting of our hearts toward that, towards that place of unity. That's the Ratzov. And then and then the shove is returning, returning to um, embodiment, purpose, fulfillment, incarnation, uh, kind of realization. It's taking, you know, so, so there is this movement between and those, those two parts of ourselves, the one that one that goes and the one that returns. And um, this, um, this going and returning become the kind of a, the basic rhythm of consciousness and also of creation in general. And they're like the, they're like the tides, the ebb and the flow of the, uh, you know, what we experience cyclically in all of our endeavors and in all of our experiences. And in order to enter into the dance, we have to become familiar with that rhythm of Ratzov Shov. And, um, you know, I want to say that um, being, becoming aware of those inner tendencies and utilizing 
these two, two different tendencies wisely and appropriately is the spiritual art of wisdom. <laughs> it's like, like understanding the rhythm of the tides. Mm. And the tides are always happening in us, in our own spiritual journey. And that's the dance. And when we try to fight it and try to like say, no, I want the tide to come out now, to go out. It's coming in. You know, we're gonna we're gonna lose. <laughs> um, so opening up to that to that rhythm, and um, and noticing it everywhere, and then attuning ourselves to it, so that we are dancing with it, and we are knowing it as a dance, and um, that place of of. Of, of, of uh, you know, sort of living from that rhythm is what moves us forward. You know, like being in that rhythm moves us forward. And um, so I wanted to, to chant these, this chant that's called Pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And and it says, and it's from the, from the liturgy, and it says, Le'erushalayim, at to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem here, I think means um, it. It could mean the Jerusalem of the heart, that place, the deepest place within us, or it can mean the Jerusalem on high, the place we are, you know, running towards. And uh, and then the, the next part of it says Berachamim Tashuv. It means like we have to then show uh, we're running towards God, uh, kind of this wider reality, and um, and what brings us back? Compassion. <coughs> Compassion sends us back into our lives to connect with others, to connect with ourselves, to um, you know to kind of be the, be the bodhisattvas that we all are of bringing that, that light into the world, mm -hmm. bringing the divine flow into the mishkan that we have built, Sai. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so, so, um, so I, I want to invite you to chant. Uh, you're going you're to have a choice of which one to chant. If right now your heart is in the place of running towards uh, you know, reaching out towards that highest, highest place of holiness. You'll sing this. Let's see. Lirushalayim One. Raise your hand if this is the one you want to sing. And so if what it feels like is that you want to embody that holiness, you want to take it into the world now, that you want to really feel like it is like connecting to your purpose and bringing it down. This is what you'll chant. Berachamim tashuv, berachamim tashuv, ah, berachamim tashuv, berachamim tashuv, ah. Rachamim tashuv, rachamim tashuv, So, um, so do you, does everybody know which one you're going to do? You have to do one of those, okay? 
You have to do one of those. You can't sit there. You have to like enter in the dance, be in the dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to say uh, those who are coming to the Jerusalem with me will start. center inside you and the out breath embodying that divinity So this uh, time that we're in is leading up to Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. 
which is a, a time of lament, a time of acknowledging uh, the places of destruction. And um, actually, in that acknowledgement, finally being able to, to sort of clear away the rubble uh, to, um, to begin to, you know, to find that holiness. So the Book of Lamentations is so difficult, you know, it really brings up the hardest places inside us. And uh, towards the end of the Book of Lamentations, there is this line um, that after we have sort of gone to the depths, we come out and, and we say, you know, hashi vein, hashi yeah. So once the, once the kind of like everything else has fallen away, it's almost like, you know, that's part of what facilitates a return to the, the oneness um, because we can't hold on to those forms anymore. They've, they've all been demolished. And, uh, and it says now, Hashivenu, Hashivenu ya, turning towards God. And, uh, and then surrendering, allowing ourselves to be turned. So I chant these words from Lamentations. You know, it might be jumping the gun a little bit, but this is where we're headed. That we want to um, kind of understand that all of that expression of our lament is leading us to a place where we can be, we can be so cleaned out um, that, that the turning will come natural. Um, that, you know, it's a kind of feeling of like when, in my life, it, it feels like when the rug has been pulled out from under me, I fall into the arms of God. But as long as that rug's still there, I'm going to hold on to it, you know. So Tisha B'Av is the time when those rugs, those rugs are pulled mm -hmm. out from under us and we get to um, kind of find this deeper, deeper center. So, um, so if you haven't gotten your dance on yet, I invite you to, to find it with this, with this chant. And, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a teaching from Amit Ray that says, life is a dance. Mindfulness is witnessing that dance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, we, we, so that, that witness is there, enjo enjoying it, noticing it, going with, the, with that the flow, with the tides. So, um, so this is the invitation, the invitation to the dance. And, um, you know, I just came from teaching a retreat um, that um, it was a Christian Jewish Sufi retreat. And part of it was learning a little bit about the turn that Rumi taught us. Um, and maybe some of the people who were at that retreat want to just get up and do the turn. Do the turn. There's David. Yep, yep. <laughs> so when you do the turn, you want to put one, <coughs> one hand, sort of receiving from heaven, and the other hand sending down into the earth, and then allowing yourself to be, to be turned. Counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. <laughs> now let us turn, return, and be turned. Now let us turn, return, and be turned. Now let us turn, return, and be turned to the one Let's go, let's
So to be in the dance is to know that the music is happening all the time. Um, and uh, it was Nietzsche who said, those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane hmm. by those who could not hear the music. So hearing the music, allowing it to move you, even if people think you're crazy, you know, people will, they will. <laughs> but hearing the music means like understanding the the rhythm and flow of life and uh, and managing change the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it to move with it to join the dance and um, I was you know just experimenting today just moving around the house uh, to say, oh, any movement can be a dance, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's like what, um, what kind of awareness and uh, kind of sparkle I bring to it. And um, 
So, um, so I ultimately I feel like the dance is about transformation. And uh, some people ask me um, sometimes, like, why I'm not a congregational rabbi. Well, not, not that many people ask, but some people, they ask me. <laughs> the people who don't know me will ask me, like, well, well do you have a congregation, you know? And... Um, of course, you are our congregation. Yeah, you are our <laughs> congregation. So, but really, the, my, my whole kind of, like, wrestle, dance with congregational life is that what I notice is that everybody doesn't go to the synagogue to be transformed. There's a lot of other reasons why people go to synagogue. And, um, and I, re I realized at some point is like what I'm interested in is transformation. And some of the other stuff, it's like I'm not even that good at it, you know, and, <laughs> and I don't have a lot of great interest, you know. And, um, but I'm so interested in transformation mm -hmm. and so curious and so ready to, you know, to jump in. And I'm always looking around and saying, who wants to go, who wants to do this dance of transformation? Who wants to do it? Because there's something about um, the, the, the collective dance that we do uh, that is so powerful and that every time I get stuck, um, one of you who are dancing pulls me into it back into the dance. And I, you know, looking around the Kazoom room, every single one of you has pulled me into the dance again. Mm -hmm. And we pull each other into that dance. So, um, because we forget, we remember, we forget, we remember, yeah. as you so, know. <laughs> so, the, the prophet. Jeremiah, who knows something about tragedy uh, and knows something about moving through that tragedy into transformation, um, has this line uh, that says, um, I, uh, that he's, he's channeling God, and he says, I will, I will turn their mourning into joy. joy. That's radical. That's transformation. I'll turn their mourning into joy. And, uh, and, it, and it's, um, you know, as we move towards Tisha B'Av, it's sort of like you can't avoid that mourning. That mourning actually is the, the raw material for our joy. It is what's going to end up sort of giving us the momentum. The, it's going to be, uh, it's going to really give us the dance, you know. And um, I remember, um, you, you know, um, who was it? The, the ecstatic dance person? What's her name? Gabriel Roth. Oh, Gabriel Roth. Gabriel Roth. May her memory be a blessing. Mm. Um, you know, she she's in one of her videos of dance videos. She looks at she looks at you and she says, "Well, if you won't you do your dance, who will?" <laughs> <laughs> that was a challenge. A challenge. If you don't do your dance, who will? But she also she the other thing that she taught. It was like sometimes people would say to her, oh, I feel so sad, I feel so heavy, I can't dance. And she would say to them, well, then dance your heaviness. Dance your sadness. Dance your lament. And uh, in the movement of that dance is where the transformation will happen. But we sometimes we get so in this inertia you know, that, we, that we're not moving into the dance. And so we don't get to experience that transformation. So I am I'm daring you. Hmm. We are daring each other to step into the dance, even when you feel heavy, even when you feel angry. Uh, whatever it is, it's all part of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so I want to just ask you first, before we enter into this practice, just um, feel whatever heaviness is there on your heart. <coughs> you know, it could be something personal, it could be something that you read in the news. You know, there's a, whatever heaviness is there, we want to 
to say to that part, you know, yes, you can, you're in the dance as well. You know, when a dance, what, whatever you're feeling, you dance it. And, uh, and it becomes then the dance of transformation. I'm looking at Judy, who's in the, she's been doing her Nia, her <laughs> Nia dancing, you know. Oh, oh, and yeah, and I'm looking at Linda Lea, who is like, you know, a master of dance as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, so, but it's like all, you know, all of us, and sometimes when I feel like what I'm doing as a teacher is I'm like going into the dance and then I'm looking and say, you know, like, how do I pull you in? How do I invite you into the dance as well? Because mm -hmm. that's what good teaching is, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. You get to experience <clears throat> the rhythm of, of life. So let's, let's um, and there's a dance of whether my voice holds up or not, yes, and sorry. if it doesn't, Rachmel has the beautiful voice. Yes, yes. Pray for <laughs> Shefa's voice. <laughs> Give a little extra energy. So here, right <clears throat> in that heavy place in my heart, I'm gonna start. I will turn the morning into joy. I will turn the morning into joy. I will turn the morning into joy. Afakti evlam le sesor. Afakti evlam le sesor. Afakti evlam le sesor. Le sesor. I will turn.
Fakti Evlam Lusasom I will turn their morning into joy you to close your eyes and let the dance move you to stillness. Breathe into that heart of stillness. As you open up your heart, I invite you to just to send out that energy of transformation into the world so that those who are in mourning will know themselves in a dance that leads them to joy. And those that are stuck will feel invited into the dance. And those that are suffering will have the wide perspective and the movement inside in order to be able to sustain that joy through the difficult times. As that generous heart overflows into the world, you can just feel yourself in the dance. You know, that knowing that whatever it is that's happening, it's it's moving, it's changing, it's turning, it's returning. And we want to bless the dance, bless the process. Hmm. Yeah. So I invite you to open your eyes and give a blessing to everyone here mm -hmm. in the Kazoom room. And hey. hey, everybody. Blessing the dance here. Um, you know, and, and I, I think there's something about the dance is sort of knowing our lives as a movement of, of beauty. You know, that we can bring grace to it. You know, even when we're stumbling, you know, we can say, oh, that was just part of the dance. <laughs> I meant I meant that. I meant, I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I missed you the last couple of weeks and there's some people here. What Jennifer Jennifer, you're gonna no no. You're gonna be there? You're gonna be some, there, Jennifer. The Episcopal right? House of Prayer. Episcopal House of North Prayer. North of Minneapolis. Yeah. So that's where Chef will be uh, next Thursday. But the following Thursday. The following Thursday we'll be back. We'll be back. Um, in the dance. And um Coming up, um, also, if um, there's two more places left for the river trip, if there's anybody who is wants to go dance down the Green River in southern Utah, wow. um, doing the dance of love, of uh, towards the, you know, we we float towards the confluence and let the river kind of take us. So if anybody wants to do that, go to. Go to my website. Sign up. Uh, we got those two more two more people coming. Judy, Judy's coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, also, there's a retreat uh, that you can start thinking about saving up for the end of January. A soul lift retreat. Um, that um, would be great In to see Tampa, some uh, see Tampa, Florida. some three dimensional people there. Oh boy. <laughs> So at the end of our practice, um, those uh, those 